Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the ISDT 608 AC, a smart convertible charger that supports both AC and DC. In case you are not familiar with ISDT, they are a very well known and innovative manufacturer of battery chargers. Normally the quality of their products is very good and I can attest that I've been using their D2 charger for more than two years and I've charged hundreds of batteries using it with zero issues. The feature that makes the 608 AC charger unique is that instead of integrating both AC and DC power options into a single charger, it offers the ability to detach the power supply unit from the charger module, so at home you can power it up using the AC power adapter, and when you are traveling on the go, you can simply disconnect it. And by the way, I recommend to be careful because the edges are a little bit sharp, and I've already cut myself. On its own, the battery charger is pretty compact, and you can use your car battery or other LiPo batteries in order to power it up and then charge your batteries on the go. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the charger you can find some stickers, the user manual, an AC cable and four rubber pads that you can stick on the bottom of the charger. In terms of specs, the maximum charging power of the 608 AC charger is 50 watts on AC and 200 watts on DC. Its supported input voltage when powered using AC is between 100 to 240 volts, so you can use it all around the world, and when powered using DC, it is between 10 to 30 volts. In addition, its maximum charge current is 8 amperes, its maximum discharge current is 1 ampere, and it supports these types of batteries. In terms of dimensions, the charger together with the power supply unit weighs 355.7 grams, the charger on its own weighs 160 grams and the weight of the power supply module is 195.7 grams. Operating the charger is very easy and conveniently done using this rotatable and clickable charger which is located on the side of the charger. On the top side of the charger you can find a high quality but pretty small 1.5 inch color LCD screen. On its bottom side you can find a micro USB connector which is used for updating the firmware of the charger. Next to it you can find a male XC60 battery connector and a 2 to 6 cells balance plug which are used for charging the connected battery. And finally on the left side you can find a ventilation hole and a fan and over here as I showed you before you can find another XT60 male connector which can be either connected to the power supply or to another battery in order to power the charger. Now I've got the charger powered up. In case you have previously used ISDT chargers, you're going to be very familiar with the user interface. Clicking the dial is going to take us to the task setting where we can choose the task. So first of all, we can choose charge, discharge, destroy, which is a new and interesting feature, which is going to destroy the battery which is connected to it and bring it to zero volts. In addition, you can also choose DC power, which is also a new option. So you can use the charger as a power supply. Over here, you can select the output voltage, which is by the way, going to be outputted through the battery XT60 connector. It goes all the way up to 30 volts and all the way down to two volts. The current can be adjusted between five amperes all the way down to 0.2 amperes. Next you can select to turn on the output. So first I'm going to unplug the connected battery. So now the output is on and now over here you can see that the output is 2 volts and over here you can see the drone ampere which is now 0 because nothing is connected to the battery port. While the output is set to on you can still adjust all the settings and clicking the output again is going to turn it off. Now in addition, of course, you have the storage option. So if you're going to select it, you can choose the chemistry of the battery, which is its type. So you can select between all these values. Under condition, you can select the end voltage per cell, which is by default 3.8 volts for LiPo batteries. So you can set it all the way down to 3.7 volts and all the way up to 3.9 volts. When the battery is going to be connected, it's going to automatically select the number of cells. So if I'm going to manually set it right now to 2S and then plug a battery, 
Of course, I also have to plug its balance connector. Now it's going to automatically select 4S. The current can be set all the way down to 0.1 ampere and all the way up to 8 amperes. However, you should keep in mind that when connected using AC, the maximum charge power is only 50 watts, which means that if you are going to charge a 4S battery, the maximum current is going to be around 3 amperes. After selecting your desired settings, you can hit start. And now the battery is being charged. Over here, you can see the current, the total mini ampere that the battery was charged with, the voltage of each connected cell, and by rotating the settings dial, you can switch to the system information screen where you can see the status of the connected battery. The fan is pretty loud and will be turned on automatically once needed. And using a sound meter, I measured 63.2 decibels at a distance of about 10 centimeters. While a battery is being charged, you can adjust the charging current by clicking the dial. And then over here, you can adjust the settings. And if you'd like, you can also stop the charging procedure. Now, by the way, in case you wonder, it is possible to charge a battery only using the XT60 battery connector. So make sure to select the right number of cells. After pressing start, it's going to prompt you that you're going to perform the task without the balancing port. And now, as you can see, the battery is being charged. In order to access the settings screen, you will need to long press the rotatable dial. Over here, you can adjust the lowest input voltage, which is by default set to 10 volts. I recommend that if you are going to use a 4S external battery in order to power the charger, you should set it to 14 volts. The minimum value is 10 volts, and it goes all the way up to 24 volts. Next, you can set the maximum input power. It goes all the way down to 30 watts and all the way up to 230 watts. You can also adjust the backlight between low, middle, and the default value, which is high. Next, you can adjust the volume. You can set it to off, low, middle, and the default value, which is high as well. Next, you can set the completion tone. So once the battery is going to finish charging, it's either going to repeat the completion tone or only sound it once. You can also adjust the language between the following options. You can initiate a self-test. You can also perform a calibration, which will require you to connect a battery to the charging ports. So now a battery is connected, and after pressing it, you can calibrate the value of each cell individually. You can save the settings. You can restore the settings back to the default settings. And you can also go back without doing anything. Over here, you can also calibrate the voltage of the input and also the output voltage. Once you go back, it will prompt you if you want to save the settings or not. And if you're not going to do anything, you're going to go back without saving the settings. Finally, you can see the system information and go back to the main screen. So overall, I think that the ISDT 608 AC charger offers some really interesting features and I really like the ability to easily convert between a field charger and the home charger. Its main downside, however, is that it's limited to only 50 watts when connected to AC and I hope and also think that later on ISDT are going to release bigger power supply units which are probably going to be compatible with the 608 AC charger. The 608 AC charger has a price tag of around $60, which is not that bad in my opinion. However, if you're only looking for a field charger, I recommend to go with a cheaper one like the M6 charger by Toolkit RC or other field chargers by ISDT, which are a little bit more expensive. But for a hybrid solution, I think that $60 are not that bad. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this charger, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.